If you like bread, you came to the right place. There are endless varieties of bread and that can be daunting when you get started. But delicious bread can be made out of few ingredients. Flour, water, salt, yeast, and that's it. But if you want to add more, nobody's stopping you. But for this simple recipe, I will share with you my most easiest sandwich loaf bread that takes little ingredients as well. That is different from the store, but oh so delicious and without all the adjectives that they add. Now it looks daunting at first, but trust me and bear with me when I say it's just a few steps that you need to understand how it goes and then for a bread making god. And you don't need a stand mixer, but it is making your life easier if you have one when we're going to need the dough. So grab your apron, your ingredients, and if you have it, your stand mixer, and let's go. Here are a few things you need to make this sandwich bread. A cheap baking tin to bake your bread in. It is not necessary for all bread, but it is for this one. A scale is very important since you need to be precise with your measures for baking. I even have a smaller, more precise scale for my salt, for example. It's a bit extra, but in my opinion, worth the investment. A stand mixer if you have one, but like I said, you can also knead by hand. For this recipe, I keep it to the absolute basic ingredients for you to make an easy, delicious sandwich bread. I also recommend to anybody who wants to start out baking their own bread to start with this basic recipe, since you can then understand the differences between different ingredients that go into bread and also what you can substitute for any ingredient or what you need to add to bread to make it even more luxurious, fluffy and delicious. The list of things you can alter in bread recipes is endless. They say cooking is an art and baking is a science, but when it comes to the variety of bread baking, I feel it's an art as well. Here's a list of ingredients you can add or replace in your recipe with the possible outcome. Now another thing that will decide how your bread will turn out is the percentage of liquid against the amount of flour you use. We call this baker percentages and all the ingredients are measured up against the flour. So for the liquid, this is something referred to as the hydration level. For example, if you have 100 grams of flour and you use 60 milliliters of water, that's a 60% hydration level. And then on top of the measurement, it's also important what ingredients you use, the quality of them and what temperature they all have. But don't worry, all these things come with time and practice if you want to learn it. Otherwise, if it's too much information, just follow this recipe carefully. So to start, to a bowl, add 500 grams of your best all-purpose or bread flour, preferably with a high protein content of 12% or higher. Add 7 grams of fine sea salt and mix it through the flour, because then we add 7 grams of instant yeast, so be careful throwing these two on top of each other because that might ruin your bread. If you have dry or fresh yeast, first mix it with water to see if it's still alive and bubbly. Then add 260 milliliters of lukewarm water. The Temperature should be between 27 to 34 degrees Celsius or 80 to 100 Fahrenheit. That's our sweet spot for our yeasty friends to get active. You can also start by mixing 240 milliliters of water and check how dry your dough is. Not every flour is the same and some absorbs more water than others. And for extra richness, set aside 30 grams of softened unsalted butter to mix in later. Add all the ingredients together and here you can choose to mix it by hand for 10 to 15 minutes or let your stand mixer do all the work with the dough hook for 15 to 15 minutes as well. Halfway through the kneading, add your 30 grams of softened butter. To check if your dough is kneaded enough, you can use the technique called a window pane test. Stretch out a piece of dough as far as you can and when you can see light coming through the dough, it's kneaded enough. Then take your dough and strengthen it by making a tight ball for the rice face. And of course, make sure to give it a slap of love like you slap that like and subscribe button, right? Then use some oil or butter to coat the bowl against sticking put your dough ball in and some cling film with your favorite smiley on it mine is called joe the dough or a damp kitchen towel works fine as well or you can add both if you want to make sure joe the dough is nice and cozy then set it aside to rise in a warm spot for one hour or until doubled in size after an hour Punch your dough down and reshape it into a dough ball again. Then we'll let the ball rise again for another hour or until doubled in size. This way you strengthen your dough which will result in a fluffier, taller and beautiful bread. You can also let it rise only once for 2-3 to three hours, but it's proven to give you better results this way. See what works for you and experiment I would say. In the meantime, butter up your baking tin completely and then take your dough when it has risen, place it on your work surface and press it out flat 
into a rectangular shape so that the width matches the baking tin. Roll it up tightly and place it into your baking tin. Cover it and let it rise until it doubles in size again. Mine has risen just above the baking tin, but if you have even more patience, it can go even higher than this. Also, to improve your bread's rising strength and make it even taller and fluffier, you can add various ingredients such as enzyme mix, bread improver, and even vitamin C tablets to help strengthen your bread. I suggest searching for these names and adding a teaspoon or so of it to your dough if you want a taller bread. Put the bread in a preheated oven on 220 degrees Celsius or 430 degrees Fahrenheit and spray the bread with some water to create a bit of steam. This will help the bread puff up. Bake it for 40 minutes but turn down the oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Fahrenheit after 20 minutes. When the bread is done, take it out of the tin and it should fall out because you buttered the baking tin, right? Then optionally, but very nice for a pretty gloss, you can smear some butter on top of it. And then congratulations, you've made your first sandwich loaf. Make sure to let it cool completely before you slice into it, otherwise it will ruin the inside. I know it's hard, but then you can enjoy the whole bread however you like. Look at that inside, beautiful. I made a quick BLT sandwich since I was hungry after all that waiting. So I sliced up two slices of my bread and the rest of the bread I sliced up into slices and stored them into the freezer immediately since this bread only lasts for a few days before it becomes still. So I would highly suggest to immediately freeze some slices if you don't plan to eat this bread in the coming three days. For the BLT I fried up some bacon, sliced and salted some tomatoes, took some iceberg lettuce and made a quick mustard mayo sauce with all the ingredients listed here. Add all the ingredients to the slices and there you have it. Enjoy. And there you have it, your own homemade sandwich loaf. Super easy to do, of course you can add other ingredients to make it silkier, smoother, longer lasting, larger. That all includes milk, butter, enzymes, any kind of adjectives that they add to the store-bought version as well. But I would say this is a very, very good base to start with. And then from here on on, you can play around with changing the water with milk, adding some more butter, adding some sugar, etc. I'll make a guide on how to make bread where I explain each component and what it does to the bread. So let me know in the comments below if you're interested in such video. But for now, this is a great base recipe to make your own bread. It's cheaper, it's more fun, and it's also way more rewarding when you taste this loaf. A freshly made loaf with bacon, lettuce, tomato. What else can you ask for, right? Mmm. Mm. Oh, sorry. I needed a moment there. So I would say go ahead and make this bread. See what you think for yourself. It might take a few times of practice to get it down to your liking. And if you're looking for a ciabatta or any other kind of bread recipes, you can watch my next video right here that shows you how to make easy small ciabattas from scratch or go back to basics and make one of my flatbreads. So then I'll see you in one of these videos, but bye for now.